Girl, get over here and gossip with my sister. Hey guys, welcome to Sister Girl Gossip, because you know your sister gonna be gossiping with his other sister. I'm Chris. Yeah, I'm Cole, and we're gossiping. And we're gonna be gossiping about Disney. Yes. And all things Disney World. Yes. <laughs> you, <laughs> you have uh, quite this inside scoop on everything Disney related. So we're gonna we're gonna Yo, start. I got I got the scoop. I got the shit. <laughs> we're gonna start it off with like the happy times though. So you have to like hold off and like watch the whole episode to get through like Chris's like dark yeah. secrets. <laughs> Y'all are actually going to have to listen to this whole podcast, or you can be a lame ass and skip through it, whatever. But the good times are just as fun. Yeah, but if you do skip uh, through the first part, you will uh, be uh, negatively impacted for when we do the uh, questionnaire at the very end. There's going to be a multiple choice test. We both put money into the pot. Yeah. Whoever gets the most <laughs> questions correct gets the jackpot. That's true. I already completed it, though, so... Uh, I got a 100, mainly because I made it, but so as long as you, you have to get better than 100 somehow. I did it and I only got a 75, so I don't know what went wrong. It's true. And you made up three fourths of the questions. So that's why I got 75. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Mine were doing like okay, Disney guys, related. Don't. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris is in a mood. He's, he's, he's in his car. <laughs> so, okay. Which we will get to at the end of the podcast, what is going down. But right now we're starting with the happy times, okay? <laughs> the happy times. All right, so Chris, tell, tell us some happy Disney stories. Okay, y'all. So mm-hmm. I grew up going to Disney World on vacations. My parents were Disney people. My very first trip to Disney World was when I was like one and a half. It was 1996. It was the 25th anniversary when the castle, the special castle for the anniversary was a birthday cake. Like that was the very first time I went. Yeah. And there's a lot of really cute pictures. I'll try and find some so I can show you guys through osmosis. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it was really good. And so pretty much, all the time we were watching Disney movies and things like that. Like my favorite Disney movie and Disney character will always be Winnie the Pooh. Um, that guy has my heart. Piglet would be a very close second. And then obviously I'm a villain's kind of girl. So my favorite villain is Maleficent. So, you know, I was sitting there flipping out whenever Maleficent would be on the screen. Cause that's my bitch. <laughs> um, but anyway, the very first time I saw Winnie the Pooh, though, was actually my brother's senior trip in 2010. So we're going to skip from 1996 all the way well, to 2010. What do you mean y'all. that's the first time you saw Winnie the Pooh? Like it- I didn't do characters growing up. Like I was afraid of them. So <laughs> I grew a pair of balls in 2010 and met Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> You're like, I think I'm fine. It's finally time I can meet Winnie the Pooh, the scariest Disney character. (laughs) Literally, like, I grew a pair and I was like, I'm going to go meet my hero. So I met him in Epcot in Christopher Robin's bedroom. And it was probably the cutest thing I've ever done. (laughs) That doesn't sound like a a situation you could say anywhere else besides like a Disney thing. Literally. I literally. Christopher Robin's room anywhere. (laughs) I literally went into this child's bedroom and I met his stuffed teddy bear. But, uh, girl? Yes. (laughs) And the bed is the size of like King Kong himself. I mean, we shrunk down to the size of Pooh and we talked to Pooh and it was really fun. I don't remember that. Is that, that's not still a thing. Is it his bedroom? Yeah. He's still there. It's in, uh, the London part of Epcot. Oh, okay. I, I really don't remember that. Yeah, it's super cute. That's one of my favorites. I do remember, th- speaking of the happy times, um, my grandparents, back when uh, Disney World did it literally cost your firstborn child to go. Um, well, it didn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my grandparents would get uh, annual passes, so we would go every year from, like, literally, like, before I was born. So my 
parents and my grandparents would go like in the 80s, all through the 90s. Um, and m- I would say we probably stopped going every year like um, like 2010 or so. Maybe a little bit before, oh, maybe dang. like maybe like 2007 or 2008. I can't remember the exact year, but it was I went on a lot of Disney trips when I was young. Um, and I remember one specific time uh, my grandpa got us all. I think it was just vanilla ice cream, uh, just in like, <laughs> just in a normal vanilla ice cream cone. And as soon as he like went to eat his a bird <laughs> from above just started shitting and it went all over his face and right into his ice cream. Oh, I remember you telling me this. <laughs> I remember the story. Yeah. Poor Papa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, he did not get to enjoy that ice cream. <laughs> but you were probably laughing your ass off, weren't you? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, that was like one of my earliest memories because that happened when I was like maybe five also, did you know if a bird shits on you in the wild, it's good luck? Oh, is it apply at Disney World too? No, at Disney World, if you get shit on, that's just kind of how it is. <laughs> it's just shit. Yeah, it's just shit in Disney World. <laughs> Although I could see some like uh, really dumb people that go to Disney World like get shit on. They're like, oh my god, it's raining whipped cream. <laughs> Ew. You know, they would, with chocolate chips in the middle. Then you would see a TikTok, like, two weeks later, like, oh my god, guys, check out this Disney hack. If you just open your mouth to the sky, whipped cream will fall on it. I'm not even kidding you. Anytime I have to super greet, there are people who literally ask me about the dome. The weather dome that's apparently over Disney the World. D- what? <laughs> these, these, they're, these people, there is, there has to be, like, a Reddit a TikTok and Instagram, something people believe. And they're so legit when they come up and ask me that I'm concerned. Um, They're like, hi, is there any way to turn off the rain? (laughs) Is there any way to turn the sun down? It's getting a little too hot. Like people literally (laughs) ask me that. And there's a dome over Disney world, apparently. And I'm like, honey, uh, you know, you're in Florida. Um, where the sun literally burns your skin off and it rains every day. What the hell are you asking me right now? <laughs> Although I... And they're so for real. And whenever I tell them no, they ask for a manager. I wish I was kidding with y'all right oh. now. <laughs> I would love to see that fight. They're like our age. Like literally our age or maybe like middle age. They're not old because I, I, I believe the old people aren't stupid as fucking hell. But it's our age and like middle age. Oh, that's really kind of depressing. So my mind immediately went to like the old ass like uh, boomer Karens that are always in those like mobility scooters, and not because like they need it, because they're like literally like, <laughs> five hundred pounds. Like that's where my mind went to. Like in terms of people no, that would ask more that. Stories about those bitches. <laughs> but um, and I mean there are boomer Karens as well that are asking, but for the most part, it's literally people our age, and for some for reason reason i don't know what they are smoking but they believe there's a like a dome that can like fluctuate the weather and then when the manager comes out because i walk away i'm like i ain't dealing with this shit <laughs> i the went to they're sitting there for 30 minutes trying to explain to them there is nothing we can do about the weather oh my god how funny especially when it comes to like when shows are down or parades are down because of rain and they're like can't you just turn it off <laughs> like bitch go back home to ohio and keep smoking your mud like what the hell you're just like you pull out like this like uh red uh rotary phone just like uh, let me put god on the phone real quick um yeah oh no he said there's a delay we can't really do do you want to talk to him literally though it just it baffles me that people believe that and it's like do you need help like do i do I need to take you somewhere? Do you need professional help? But oh my god, the people on those mobility scooters. Oh yeah, let's hear it. I okay, so back in the day, like whenever I would go on vacations, they never bothered me. I was like, okay, this fat person probably can't walk, whatever. Living here now and going to Disney every day. Um, oh my god. The amount of times those fat fuckers have <laughs> ran over my ankles 
oh, or cool. run in behind me because they're going too fast and literally run me over or they'll honk at me if I'm like walking too slow for them. The amount of times I've turned around and gotten in these fat bitches faces and been like, you better stop because I don't know. If y'all need to know one thing about me is I'm confrontational. I have zero patience and I fucking hate people. <laughs> so never. So how I have a job here, I have no idea. Yeah, the, the, but the place where you're supposed to be like the friendliest place on earth, the most magical place, and then like cut to you like scream. <laughs> yeah. So when they get nasty with me, or instead of just being like, excuse me, and honk their horn, girl, you best believe I grab those handles, and I bend over, and I give it to them. Like, how how can you be so entitled that your 500-pound ass, one can't walk itself from one part to the other, you might lose a couple pounds, but two, think you're better than everyone else, because you are so goddamn fat, you could probably kill a child if you ran it over. Like, that should embarrass you. You should be embarrassed. You should be so embarrassed that you want to work on getting thinner so you can walk. Right. And Disney World, literally, like, the best place to do it. Like, you have to walk everywhere. (laughs) Literally. You can walk 20,000 steps in one park. And those fat asses really need it. But no, they're riding around their scooters going to every goddamn buffet they can and stuffing their face. Yeah, I don't. Think- I cannot tell you the amount of heat strokes and heart attacks and alphas happen at Magic Kingdom, and it's those freaking fat people. Not to mention because they have so many goddamn rolls that they have yeast growing in between them. Ooh, they smell like ooh. shit. It is so bad. I'll be in one of if if I'm hanging out with one of my uh, character friends. And they come in to take some pictures, and you can smell them. Oh, that's it, gross. Yeah. Yeah. That's Especially nasty. under all that crap we we hang out with them and wearing crap. If you can smell under that, there's something wrong. I don't think I can remember any specific times that I was at Disney World that, like, it really bothered me that people were in mobility scooters. The only time I noticed it and I got super annoyed was, uh, I can't remember what the ride's called. It's the one that's in the, uh, the ball of Epcot. Oh, Spaceship Earth. S- Spaceship Earth. Because literally, like, it is, like, maybe every 10 seconds the ride stops because some <laughs> mo- some person in a mobility scooter has to get on. And yes. It's... It, it's one of those rides that like it's just constantly moving. So they have to stop the entire ride to let this one person on. And it's literally like every 10 seconds. It's happened every time I've gone. So I turned into a 45 minute one. Pretty much. But it is nice that it's air conditioned. So like you can plan on like having like a nice like 30 minute like cool down session. Yes. And it's so dark in there. You can literally take a nap. Yes. Yes. That too. I just, I, I will never understand. Oh, so sorry, I'm yawning. Um, I will never, ever understand how you think it's okay to be rolling around a scooter like that. I, I just, I would be embarrassed because they think it's cool that they can skip the line because they're fat or they can get on the bus first because they're fat or get on the monorail first because they're fat. It's embarrassing because my dad was in a scooter, not because my dad's fat. It's literally because, like, my dad is old and decrepit and can't walk anymore. Yeah, that's what they're meant. They're meant for people that like that or like the, who are injured or they have some uh, illness or like some like, you know, something like that. Whenever my dad, because he got to skip the lines and stuff like that. I just I felt there was this like embarrassment only because people are looking at you and think that you're abusing the system. And so I felt bad for my dad because I was like, he is actually like a, like a candlestick. If he tries to walk, he'll break a leg. Like, come on. These fat people, they have no excuse. Like, they are definitely abusing the system. And they can get a pass. They can be like, oh, my God, diabetes. You know, as their 700-pound self is getting wheeled onto fucking, like, Expedition Everest, which they don't even fucking fit on. Yeah. Yeah. That's always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Cause it's like, it's one of those things like you never know like why they need it, but like you can, like you can tell like it's at some point, like why they need it. Okay. But also 
Disney is doing this new thing. Um, so the disability passes, you could literally go up to guest services and be like, I got diarrhea. And they'll give you a disability pass so you can skip the line. Oh. People have been abusing the hell out of it. So now they're partnering up with Advent Health and they are literally picking and choosing who gets them now. Oh, that's they terrifying. screwed up so bad. You have to have an actual disability now. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of messed up. Like I that that kind of irks me when people like abuse systems like that or it's like can we all just like yes. play fair and like do things how we're supposed to that's why i am literally so sick of people because the amount of like shit they have abused like the das pass um you can get you can get them for migraines for anxiety for uh, oh sorry um <laughs> for burping or for ibs you know things like that but now I think what they're limiting the death pass to is autism um, and some other form of like neurodivergent, like some kind of mental capacity kind of handicap right. to be able to get that. So literally the people who can't hold in their piss and their shit have to line with a bag pretty much. Like those people ruined it for everyone. Right. That's sad. To me, that's not okay, because literally there's probably a child that you're skipping that is probably dying of cancer, but they couldn't get a DAS pass because they're all gone because your fat ass took it up. Right. It's just, I, ooh, girl, this one got (laughs) heated, man. Well, we're not even like to like the deep, dark secrets yet. We're just talking about like general Disney, like we're, we're we're on like customers now. I know, we haven't even made it to like... Should we go back to the happy times? We didn't even get through all the happy times. We should probably go back to the happy times because that got me heated. I'm sweating. (laughs) Okay, let's go back to the happy times. Um, Oh man, what was happened? I remember one year that I went. um, I kid you not, I am like an avid lover of Splash Mountain and I am like devastated that it's gone. Aw, yeah. I mean... The new ride does look really cute. The Tiana's Bayou. It does look cute. But Splash Mountain was definitely my favorite. That and Haunted Mansion were like my favorites. Yeah. It was just like, it was like one of like the original like classic rides where it's just like, oh, how are you going to get rid of it like that? Oh, girl, that's going to get me heated. So we can't, we can't get into that. But I I was just going to say, like, I remember one time that I went um, for whatever reason, um there just was not a line for it so like i rode splash mountain maybe like 15 times in a row like an amazing I remember on the experience. senior trip we rode it a ton of times too oh yeah because there wasn't re- very much of a line then either it was like five minutes girl it was literally you me nathan and ashley and we would ride splash mountain all night long as fireworks were going off oh <gasps> yes i remember that that was fun so it, Splash Mountain was just always so good. Because I remember for a couple of trips before my brother on your trip, that was like one of the only rides I could ride. Because Splash Mountain, or Splash, Space Mountain freaked me out. Big Thunder Mountain hurt. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go on the log flume. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, the laughing place and stuff like that. Like, it was such a good story. And I guess... And here we go. I guess I can understand why they changed it. The Song of the South did have some very interesting themes to it. Yeah, no, I, I like, I totally understand like taking it a- away because of Song of the South, but I feel like Splash Mountain was like so far removed from Song of the South. Like it was just about like Briar Rabbit and. It was. There was nothing. Had like nothing to do with the plot of Song of the South. Girl, here comes the heat. Okay. So obviously in 2020, because of all the riots, all the unrest and stuff like that, and because we were all fucking bored sitting in our houses because of COVID, that's when everyone started flipping out about Splash Mountain. Why in the hell were we flipping out about Splash Mountain? Why? Why? It makes zero sense to me. It was a goddamn ride. With a frog and a bear showing his bear freaking ass every couple of rooms. Oh, yeah, that was the best part was I, I remember every time we wrote it, my dad would take a picture of the, uh, the asshole. Like he would just take a picture yeah. of Briar Bear's ass. <laughs> he had like hundreds like, of pictures of his ass. <laughs> and of course, you know, whenever I started working at Disney, 
all the really woke people were like, oh my God, I'm so happy Splash Mountain's gone. Like, it wasn't even a fun ride anyway. Who wants to look at a bear's butt, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, girl, uh, me? Uh, girl. I met you <laughs> right before, right before any of this shit started going down. That was probably your favorite ride. And you would have been bawling your eyes out three years ago if this was going down. <laughs> all because you want to be popular and agree with everyone else. That's why you're doing what you're doing right now in these green rooms. Because let me tell you, girl, the woke Disney people that I work with, holy hell. If I could punch someone straight in the face every day, I would. I'm sure it's like, at least uh, for sure at Disney, like it's almost like both sides of the extremes are like constantly clashing. Like there's like no middle ground. (laughs) Uh, I'm trying to think of another, like, happy memory. We can, like, swing it back. <laughs> Are you trying to take me back? <laughs> yeah, trying to take you back to the happy times. For, just real quick Y'all, before we get into, like, getting, the deep secrets. I was like, you're getting a lot of info from me. More angry. But Disney, if you're listening, I do love my job. I'm just venting. <laughs> I do love my job. Like, thank you, Mr. Walt. <laughs> yeah, don't fire me yet. I still need my benefits. Uh, I still remember my first day on Disney Cruise Line. Oh yeah, you did. I forgot you did Disney Cruise Line too. So you can yeah. we can have a whole I mean, little se- segment about the cruise on line. Disney Cruise Line. So these are happier times. The cruise contract was awful, but the friends I made and getting to hang out on the ship that was actually really fun. Um, I remember my first day. I was pissing my pants afraid because the ship is fucking huge. Oh yeah, and. It was like me and like two other people were the newbies. Everyone else knew what they were doing. And we were like, help, please. <laughs> you know, like, like lost children in a supermarket without their mom. Um, but yeah, cruise line was actually really, really fun. That's where I got drunk first. Um, I accidentally streaked in the lobby. Oh. Don't do that. <laughs> what, did that? Um, How do you, what do you mean you accidentally streaked in the lobby? So we were streaking through... Um, like the <laughs> cast corridor. Wait, you were already we thought, streaking? <laughs> well, yeah, we were running through the cast corridors, and we forgot because we were wasted. We forgot oh, the gotcha. main door we were going to go through. We thought we were going into the hall with our rooms. We took a wrong turn the hallway into the freaking atrium. Thank God it was like two a.m., so no one was in there. But it was bad. Oh my god, <laughs> those are good times. <laughs> that is pretty hilarious. I do remember I my favorite so happy to get off the ship too. My favorite story that you told me about cruise line was that one roommate that you had that was just like <gasps> like just constantly oh, <laughs> my god, y'all. We're gonna call him what what's a good name for him? Felatio. <laughs> I, I was feeling like <laughs> I, like a Tyler. <laughs> I just said Felatio because of the oh, oh Yeah, we can go Felatio. Night. We can call him Felatio literally choking on dick every <laughs> single freaking night you know i'm happy he was getting it get it girl <laughs> but i have to go to work at six in the morning <laughs> and you're up there gagging super loud at <laughs> 3 a.m no like, like girl get your gag reflex grit like come on that and go out in the hallway or like go into his room why does it always have to be ours why <laughs> do we have to host <laughs> Did it, were there any like single room like cast member? No. So all of us, unless you were main stage or a captain, you were in a bunk bed. Oh, so <laughs> why couldn't he have gone into their room? I'm pretty sure like they wouldn't mind. Yeah, I mean, or it would just be the same story as like the one poor guy, but. <laughs> I got it every single night. So the one poor guy can kiss my ass. Yeah. <laughs> you have to spread around. You can't just like let you suffer every night. So there would literally be times I would go to sleep in what we call D lounge. That is our teen lounge. There were really comfy couches in there. I would take my blanket and go to sleep. That's so funny. And then I would have to wake up early so I wouldn't get caught because I would get in a shit ton of trouble if I ever got caught in there. Um, thank God I never did, but I would go to sleep out there or I would literally go to sleep outside. <laughs> Just like on one of like the, uh, recliners or one on, of the loungers. The loungers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would go to sleep on our deck, deck four on a lounger with my blanket. Oh, I was so, so over it. 
<laughs> but then, you know, like everyone started to become a little bit more on like my side of things. So we started getting back and that's when the <laughs> sound happened because we would call the room and pretend like we were gagging on the phone that bothered him. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> so, so funny. Good. That's pretty funny. I didn't know about that part. So I kind of do, I do miss the cruise line days, but I was also what, 2021. 20, so like I was young, vibrant and fun. You had hair back then. I had hair back then. I could <laughs> literally feel the wind through my hair. Um, <laughs> So I was more fun. I'm not fun anymore. I lost all my hair. All I do is go to work and come home. All the happiness was in your hair. <laughs> Literally, and once it left, it, it said bye. <laughs> strand by strand, the happiness receded. Ah, ah, yes. Oh, that's so funny. What's another happy time? Well, I don't know. Uh, you seem to like doing character stuff. See, we can't call it that. We're friends. My friend stuff. Okay, here, let me uh, uh, rephrase that. You seem to like being friends with a lot of the characters. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> now Disney can't sue us. It just, if it didn't hurt, that's my thing. I wish it didn't hurt like it does. I should not be getting migraines to a point I throw up or pass out or Girl, black are out. You throwing, are you blacking out? <laughs> my migraines get that bad. Like, Girl. to a point where I can't see anymore. And That's I have to literally right. go into the manager's office and be like, honey, um, I either <laughs> need to go to the doctor's office now or I need to ROS and go home and sleep off this migraine because someone's going to go down and I know it ain't going to be me. Yeah. <laughs> so. And then you could be TikTok famous, be like, oh, my God, Chewbacca fainted on five small children. Ah, <laughs> Yes. Listen, being friends with Chewbacca is actually really fun. Um, I'm actually hanging out with him tomorrow. <laughs> oh my God. Give him a high five for me. I totally will. Yeah. He's actually fun. Hanging out with Darth Vader. No, <laughs> not a fan. Well, that's like, you have to like, remember like all like the weird like inputs, right? Like you have to like yes. sign basically to say things. No, being best friends with Maleficent and that bitch is everything to me. I would literally murder everyone to hang out with her every day well she is constantly trying to murder mickey mouse and phantasmic hasn't succeeded I've won a yet. couple of times by oh, the you, way oh you have <laughs> or she's won i'm sorry i didn't know there was an alternate ending to phantasmic where she won so the alternate ending is after my scene if it starts downpouring rain or lightning we stop the show and she wins <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> oh my god that's amazing yeah, so could you could you imagine Mickey just like, and suck it? Yeah, could you imagine being like the small like four year old child that's there and you just see Maleficent murder Mickey Mouse and it just starts raining and they were like, "Thanks for joining us at Fantasmic." <laughs> <laughs> well, she, they, whoever the four year old is, learn that you don't mess with a big green girl. Yeah. <laughs> Maleficent comes out like for a little meet and greet after the show, and she's just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Did we talk? I did remember one other happy memory. I can't remember if we talked about it during the senior trip, but uh, the ongoing gag that Tinkerbell is going to get caught on fire. The fireworks is going to go rogue and blow up on yeah. her. During the Magic Kingdom fireworks show, Tinkerbell like goes flying out of the castle at the end and just like a rogue firework would hit her <laughs> and there's just a fireball yes. flying by in the distance i remember waiting for fireworks and us literally about to throw up from laughing way too hard and everyone was like what the fuck is your problem <laughs> and like, we were sitting there pissing ourselves because we were imagining finger bell a little flame ball coming down the castle oh my god i mean it's just such an amazing visual just like you see her like come out and then immediately get hit and just hear <laughs> 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 just like as she like flies in the distance like you just like the scream gets quieter and quieter but everyone's gonna have their phones out recording it and screaming for her because yes. that's how it would happen They'd be like, yes oh, well you just like Tinkerbell looks so cool i think it would take a second because i think some people would think it's like part of the show and then like as soon as like you heard the screams like then it would get real <laughs> Oh, 100%. Everyone would be like, oh my god, Pyro is amazing. Wow, I don't remember this. Oh, whoa. Oh, yeah. oh, oh my god. 
as like skin starts to fall to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Falls right into someone's ice cream cone. Like, oh my god. Uh, it's a roast beef flavor now. <laughs> no, those it's are that, it's those that are Disney really uh, it's that Disney dome. It's just raining beef jerky now. Ew. <laughs> raining jerky up. They just like think but it's yeah, like that. the cloudy with a chance of meatball like type uh, contraption where it's just like, yeah, you can just do whatever we want. You know, just do you want some spaghetti? Ew. <laughs> but no, I will say the senior trip memories are really, really good. Like those. Oh, that's like my favorite to this day. Like my favorite Disney trip. Because like. Our parents weren't there. We got to do whatever the hell we wanted to do. It was just, it was such a good time. Yeah, it was like the last, um, like, hurrah of childhood. It was the last time we were happy. Yeah. <laughs> it was the last time we had hair. Is there a swig, too? Yeah. <laughs> Girl, mine fell off right after we got off the plane. Girl, I knew it. That <laughs> do you think I could just flap my hair like a maniac and it's real? Yeah. <laughs> so funny. All right. So we've been going for about uh, 30 minutes. Do we want to move on to like the dark secrets of Disney? The dark secrets that just stay on this podcast, everyone. I hope <laughs> you remember that. No one take this to Reddit and then go back to Chris and ask him about the Sky Dome. If you find me in Disney, super greeting, and you ask me something like that, I will literally get a manager and have them explain it to you. <laughs> he will literally get his manager on you. I'm going to get my manager, Karen. And then he'll walk away and you'll never see him again. All right, girl. Start asking what you want to know. Oh, well, I would just kind of assumed you would have like some dark truths to tell us. I don't really know anything about the the underground world of Disney. Well, as most of you probably know, Magic Kingdom is on the second floor. And where us lonely little numbers have to go in and clock in and be tortured is on the first floor. Uh, in the tunnels. I'm going to say that one more time. Unless you don't believe me, there are underground tunnels to get around Magic Kingdom. Sorry, I didn't quite catch up. Did you say there, there's a funnel? Like a cake? Secret tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> Secret tunnel. And, um, you know, we live there. I think if I'm working Magic Kingdom, everywhere else is above ground. But um, these tunnels, unfortunately, because they were made in 1971, haven't been kept up. Oh, um, gross. So... Some days you'll be walking in a mysterious brown, poopy smelling <laughs> liquid Ugh. lands on your basic shirt. What do you mean it and lands? Like, like just from the ceiling? Like, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, ew, where did that come from? And what is that? And where are those birds? Five seconds later, you see a big waterfall of brown water <laughs> coming from the ceiling. And then you learn a sewage pipe broke right in front of where you're supposed to walk. Oh, you literally girl. got hit with sewage water. Oh, girl, that's disgusting. So all y'all stooping, shitting in the toilet, Disney, flushing the toilet, <laughs> all of that ended up on me. So, <laughs> so lesson learned. Uh, this is a Disney hack for everybody. If you shit at Magic Kingdom, know that you are directly shitting on Chris. If you go to the bathroom at Magic Kingdom, especially above, where was I at? Fantasyland, new Fantasyland, go towards the Beast Castle, and you flush the toilet, and that was what was dripping on me, I, I will find you. <laughs> that was so disgusting. He has, a, he has a sample still of that poop, and he's going to figure out where that DNA came from. When I tell you, when they told me what it was, I went straight to the manager's office and cried. I was <laughs> like, I can't do this. I need to go home now. I need to go home <laughs> I would. I would have to. And admit they were like, what's wrong? And I was like, I literally just got hit with shit. I'm going home. <laughs> and they were like, okay, fine. Yeah, you can go home. Because I had to show her my shirt that had fucking shit water all over it. <laughs> 
Girl, I would have to go to therapy. I'd be like, I can't. I'm going. There's shit on my shirt. I got to talk to someone about it. Listen, honey, working for Disney for the week, got to have a set of balls because, like, shit just gets worse and worse and worse. <laughs> You're getting shit from so, all over. Literally, we'll have, like, alpha units all over the park because someone's, like, thrown up or someone died or, you know, things like that. And there was this one time I was in the tunnels. This is the last Magic Kingdom story because there's really not a lot that happens at Magic Kingdom that involved me. But there was there was an alpha and um, it was a little bit towards Frontierland. And um, they were rolling it down and an uh, rolling it down, rolling it down the elevator. And this person, I guess, woke up and flipped out and rolled off the goddamn gurney. Oh my in god. In the middle of the tunnel. Oh. Under Frontierland. Oh no. <laughs> so I'm trying to get to my parade position. Right. With a heavy ass costume and there's some fat person on the ground. <laughs> and we can't uh, pass them a, because that's a safety hazard. A literal roadblock. Oh my god. Yes, and you are not allowed to pass them or anything like that because, I mean, if they have to pull out, like, the jaws of life, one, you're going to get a show, but two, you don't want to <laughs> get hit by nothing. Right. <laughs> you don't want any more shit on you. <laughs> yes, so I had to go around Adventureland to get to my thing. <laughs> I was like, I hate it here. <laughs> That's so funny. Now, when it comes to, like, shows and stuff like that, it's not a whole lot of dark secrets because y'all are old enough. You know, you know what's really going on back there. Like, don't be dumb. We've seen everyone has experienced like a backstage crew, like on like at a school before. Like, yes. there's there's people running now, around like crazy. I'm sure. Now, obviously, with Disney, it's a little bit more magical. Yeah. <laughs> people don't know how things work. There's a lot more people, but for the, but for the most part. Y'all are smart and you know, like, you just, you know, I can't reveal too many secrets or I will literally get shot because there's a red dot circling my car right now. Yeah. So <laughs> there's like at least eight people watching Chris right now. Like, trust me, what I'm telling y'all right now, I could literally die. Um, I'm trying to just, I'm trying to remember other dark things, but those are the two like main things that have happened to me. That one pissed me off and grossed me out. But two, I was like, why are you on the ground? Have you why, ever, why? Have you ever witnessed any like, like physical fights before? I haven't seen any physical fights, but I've seen a lot of verbal altercations. Especially at Epcot. Um, well, yeah, because everyone's you know, drunk. <laughs> Yes, like mom and dad having a full out screaming match with their kids bawling their eyes out because they're scared. Oh. Mom and dad are literally threatening to kill each other <laughs> in the middle of Epcot, screaming with like a seven and eight year old watching. And then, like, it, in the background, just like M O C K E W M O U S E. Just like, <laughs> God, you fat <laughs> slut! I can't believe you did this to me again! <laughs> I always say it is not Disney World if there are not fighting families, crying babies, or fat people in scooters. Like it is not Disney without those three. It's the trifecta. Like if there if those three aren't there, I don't feel safe. It's yeah. not Disney. <laughs> you know you're in a simulation if you don't have those three. Yeah, something is literally up if they're not there. But no, all the verbal stuff is always mom and dad. It's never, like, two different families. Like, I've seen, like, hey, man, you cut me alive, blah, 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 you know? And then a cast member will come up and be like, shut the fuck up and deal with it. Like, literally, we're all suffering here. <laughs> but whenever it comes to, like, fight fights, it's always mom and dad. Or I'll be inclusive. Sometimes the gays will fight as well. <laughs> gays, we know you be fight. Yeah. They'll have full on screaming matches. Like I've seen um like the mom and dad. I've seen one where a boyfriend was cheating on his girlfriend with another girl and got caught at, at Disney. Disney. So he, oh. took, he took this girl on a date and his girlfriend caught him. What but she was with her friends. 
Oh my god, how crazy of a coincidence would that have to be? Oh my god, and by the way, <laughs> I do have one funny story because it involves like girlfriends and marriage and stuff. Um, I was really good friends with Chewbacca this one. Oh, I lied. I was really good friends with Vader this day. It was Vader. Because Chewbacca, there's another story. So I was hanging out with Vader. We were having a great time. This husband or this couple comes into the room and it is the number one rule that we learn. If there's a proposal, you do not get in that picture because if they say no, that whole interaction is Ooh. going to be a negative picture of that character yeah and they will never be able to see that character again yeah that's smart so this couple came into vader's room and vader is just kind of sitting there like oh, hey no. <laughs> you know i threw my i threw all my gang signs and said the words and then all of a sudden i see the guy go down on one knee and so I start walking to the opposite corner. Now, I can't, oh God, Vader can't hear very well because it's very loud the way he breathes and talks. I, <laughs> I turn around. I hear her say, no. And she ran out of the room <laughs> crying. Oh. <laughs> and the guy is sitting there with his hands over his eyes, like he's bawling his <laughs> eyes out. His girl said no to his proposal. The family is embarrassed tells me sorry, tells the attendant sorry, they walk out. The guy came up to me and goes, I don't know what happened, what went wrong. <laughs> and he left! <laughs> girl, it was so bad. Girl, you had the perfect opportunity to say one of Vader's lines. Oh my god. <laughs> it was so bad. But it was so funny. And then a couple days later, I was friends with Chewbacca, and it was uh, a cast member couple. It was a young cast member couple, too. It was a really young guy and a really young girl. And um, the girl was proposing. And she asked Chewbacca to cover up his eyes. So that means I was going to be in the picture. Um, and so I was, I was like, okay, whatever, Rar. And um, I put my hands over his eyes. And I saw her get down on one knee. And I was like, please, 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 please. Open up his eyes. He said yes, you know, and everyone celebrated. It was great, but I was just like, oh my God, if she would, or if he would have said no, <laughs> Chewbacca would have been in all those pictures and I would have gotten in deep shit, like <laughs> so much trouble. You would have had so many pipes pointed at you with shit flying at you. <laughs> yes. It was so bad. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so fun. I just can't get over the Darth Vader one. That is so hilarious. I had to tell my mom and dad right away. I was like, you will never believe what Vader just witnessed. You will never believe it. That is so incredible. I would have had to like step out of the room and like laugh my ass off. Well, girl, people say no to proposals all the time. I've seen girls say no in front of the castle. The guy. Um, I've seen gays say no in Epcot. I've seen a lot of engagements go horribly wrong and they say no I can see that but it's just it's uh, for some reason it's the fact that you did it in front of Darth Vader and like <laughs> he's like I Girl, don't he comes that... up to you and it's like I don't know what went wrong <laughs> like like Vader I... was gonna have the answers I was trying to understand it because I was like listen you probably like Star Wars she probably doesn't and you made yourself comfortable, made her uncomfortable, and she probably did not want heavy breathing and some <laughs> scary man standing in the corner <laughs> while you proposed. Oh my god! Like, what the hell was going through your mind, girl? Oh, that's that kills me. Oh, that's so incredible. So it baffles me. It baffles me. Oh my god! I had to collect myself. Oh, so let's. Uh, do we have any like? horrible like co-worker stories or like manager like boss stories that we can share well y'all need to stick around for the podcast of seniority and authority for the manager's bit oh yeah yeah, yeah for sure because i can fill up a whole hour on that one <laughs> um co-worker wise kind of like what i told you the really really woke people 
are some of the nastiest people I have ever met in my entire life. And it is so sad because a lot of them are the attendants. And we have to closely work with each other. And we don't have to trust each other. But I have to at least know that you'll do your job to protect me. And if we disagree, that person is going to make sure my life is a living hell on set. That's kind of messed up. Or if these woke people don't like the guests, they'll make their life a living hell and make the character look bad. Mm. And it's just, it's so sad to me. And, you know, if you're woke, you know, live your life. I'm just trying to get through the day to make my five cents so I can afford to at least starve under my roof. Okay. So I don't need to be hearing all your opinions and all that stuff. That's for after work. And a lot of these cast members don't understand that. And they think it's okay to unleash hell in these green rooms and make everyone uncomfortable. And then when I say something, because y'all know your sister here, I like to start fights. But <laughs> if you mess with me, girl, I'm going to make sure you're, you're going to lose. I don't care how it has to happen. If I have to call you a fat bitch, you know, and slap you, it's going to happen. Yeah, that's, that's one of those things where it's like, you there i'm all for like you know inclusion like all the things like totally like yeah like like you can't like live in your bubble like su- type of thing where it's like you have exactly. to exactly like, and like and that's the same thing with like the other like side of the extreme too where it's like you can't like be such like a hateful bigot and like you kind of have to like you have to like you know envelop yourself in other people's worldviews and like not like throw a fit if like something doesn't happen like a hundred a hundred percent like the way you think it should happen like girl here's my thing everyone needs to learn how to do the live and let live mindset (laughs) everyone just needs to live laugh and love a little bit more well no especially at work because it's the the main rule everywhere ever since i first started working at 14 years old is you don't speak about politics religion or anything of that nature at work oh for sure because you are there to work yes you can make friends and speak about you know your similar opinions and things like that but this and i'm sorry i'm sorry if this offends anyone this newer generation coming in does not understand that because it's everyone younger than me it's like 18 to 25 these are the people starting these massive fights and like this nastiness in the green rooms because they're so damn woke and they think they're right. And if they're told otherwise, they get nasty. Mm, Yeah. And it's like, honey, listen, I love you. I respect you. And I want you to live your best life. We are working at a fucking theme park. I have the goddamn like beast on my shoulders right now. I just want to go out there bow and come back and take this thing off (laughs) i don't care about you know all your stuff right now i don't okay we need to stop like please (laughs) especially after a set when you want to decompress and they won't shut the hell up it's like stop after work you can go ahead and tell me everything under the sun about how you think this is unfair that's unfair and this person should go to hell (laughs) i'll gladly sit here and listen but right now no this is not the place and I just, I don't know why. Like, like I said, I love my job. I really do. I love performing and I love seeing all the like people be happy. You know, I love this. I really do. I have some issues, but I love my job. But when these kids come in and ruin that for me, because I go into work with a pretty positive attitude, you know, especially after a good set, when you met like a really cute kid or, you know, a make-a-wish, you know, something like that. And then I come back and I have to hear, oh my God, misogyny and women should rule over <laughs> men and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, please. <laughs> like, we work at the most magical place on earth and you're really going to bring a political issue in here that no one started. Why are you bringing this up now? I was going to say, it sounds like it's more of like a time and a place thing where it's like, they they don't yes. know like the, the, et- the proper etiquette or like the proper way to express those things. And it just, it breaks my heart because for real, like you'll come off with such a high because you made someone's day a little bit more magical. And then because we have a male manager, 
this girl doesn't like that because she doesn't want to be managed by a man. She doesn't want to be in a male dominated area. And I'm like, you're joking. You are joking me, girlfriend. Like half the managers here are men. Most of them are gay. Like why, why are you sitting here speaking like this? That is a little ridiculous. If it's like that extreme. Yes. It is that bad here, girl. I wish I was kidding. (laughs) That's that is a little extreme because I can understand like talking about like, you know, like equality or workplace unbalance, like blah, blah, blah. But like at like a certain time or certain place or like certain like through certain channels, like you don't just like spout it out to like someone like that is no part or no want to be in that conversation. Like, listen, okay, especially with the equality thing, it baffles me here. Because the gay people rule at Disney. Because that's pretty much everyone who works here. You know what I mean? Right. So equality is not an issue at Disney. And when a cast member, and it always ends up being some 22-year-old girl, she always has to insert how unfair it is that a straight person is managing in her area. And I'm sitting here like, you are joking. You you cannot be for real right now. Like this, the man is just doing his job. He is making sure the character gets on set, makes magical moments, and comes back safely. Right. He's... That is the only reason the managers <laughs> are there. He's not like going around like whispering to the guests and like burn the gays, burn them. Yes. <laughs> and it just and but. When I tell you these woke little kids come in and they come in and they already think everyone's against them. Because trust me, I know who the shit managers are because I work with some of them. I know who the real problems are. Mm -hmm. And these people, these kids, they work with a manager here and there because you never work in the same spot twice. That is not how Disney works. You are always moving around. You have different managers. But they just, they automatically think they're automatically against them. And it's like, no. That's kind of sad. And then they ruin the whole day. And it's like, girl, did you not just see the magical moment? Not just I made, but you made as well. Because you interacted with this family. If that didn't bring you any happiness, I don't know why the hell you're working at Disney. Yeah, that's, that's, that is kind of sad. Like I said, like, I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, you've, entered the other side of extremism where it's like that also like isn't healthy or productive where it's like those like those those things are important but you can't let those things dictate like how your life functions a hundred percent of the time or you won't have a healthy lifestyle literally like this has become a personality trait for these people like this is their whole personality and it breaks my heart because we are not supposed to be just our political belief or just our religious belief. We are not supposed to be just that. Uh, And these (laughs) kids just think that is what it is. I'm like, are you for real? Like, because no one wants to hang out with you outside of work now. No one wants to be friends with you. No one wants to talk with you. You have ruined your social life here because you're acting like an idiot. Yeah, that's kind of sad. And then, and (laughs) and then they'll come into the green rooms and be like, it's so hard to make friends. It's so unfair. Everyone doesn't like me. No one wants to talk to me. Blah, 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 blah. No one wants to be my girlfriend. No one wants to be my boyfriend. I can't find love. It's like, have you not seen or heard the way you've talked yeah. and acted <laughs> around all of the last six right. months you've and been here? It's like that last 10 seconds. Reflect on that. Then ask. <laughs> yes. If you could be a fly on the wall here sometimes, girl, you would be so baffled. You would be happy living in Oklahoma and never want to leave. <laughs> well, girl, like, I'm not even <laughs> kidding you. Girl, how did we get off on this? I don't know. Let's go back to the dark. <laughs> let's go back to the dark side of Disney. Are there any more dark Honey, secrets? You just heard all the dark side. Well, were there any more like Hollywood studio, like dark side? Because you are, you're mainly in Hollywood studios, right? Yeah, and I'm trying to... Because a lot of the Hollywood studio stories is going to be under seniority and authority. Right. So stay tuned, girl. Um, yeah, I really can't think of anything like dark and scary that's happened at Hollywood. Have you ever been on a ride that's got stuck before? Like a really bad <laughs> ride experience? I did get stuck on Splash Mountain one time. 
and it was as, as we were going up the big hill. Oh, I and we got, got stuck yeah. at the very bottom where all the lightning strikes were happening oh. and the vultures were speaking. We sat there for 45 minutes no. and no one came to come and get us. And I remember taking a video and sending it to you and they were like, are they getting the fat Karens off yet? <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. That was so long ago. Oh my God. That was so funny. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I remember. Well, all- we sat there for 45 minutes and we were just like, hello. Hello. Like, <laughs> get us off, please. I was on, um, oh Lord, what was it? I th- I can't remember if it was Small World or Pirates. I want to say it was Pirates. And the guy in front of us, there was a a boat in front of us that we could like barely see. And I, I didn't like see the entire ordeal, but I guess like someone jumped off of the boat in front of us. Oh my God. And was like just roaming around the ride. So like they... (laughs) stopped all the boats for like i want to say 30 45 minutes and come to find out it was because they had to like get this guy off the ride <laughs> they had to find him they had he to was f- hiding they had to find him and remove him from the ride well you know they trespassed him after that too <laughs> oh yeah i'm sure because there was like security all over the place like as soon as we got off the ride okay do you remember on senior trip, the boat in front of us, there were so many people, like so many fat people on the boat. The cast members like, rock the boat and you'll keep moving. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. The boat got stuck because there was such a weight distribution. <laughs> that was, so funny. And like they had to be like so nice about it. Like they obviously knew what was happening, but they couldn't say anything. Can you rock back and forth, please? I, I do remember that because there was like two or three like people in those like mobility scooters that got on our, our boat. So funny. Oh, uh, I forgot all about that. Ooh, I did get evac'd off of Mickey and Minnie's uh, Runaway Railway where the great movie ride is. Oh, uh-huh. or was. Um, I was with my friend Lauren and this was probably six ish maybe seven months ago around halloween time um it was after a rehearsal night and we got to the city room and then all the lights came on and immediately over the intercom hey uh so the ride's not coming back on so we're gonna e back everyone please oh. <laughs> um await instruction from a cast member so we all got to get off and we kind of got a tour of like the backstage area and stuff like that it was pretty cool that was cool i do remember when um Space Mountain was getting like renovations done that they had to have all the lights on during the ride. And that was a cool experience to be able to like actually see Space Mountain. Oh, I've never gotten to do that. Could you imagine? You it was see like if you raise your hands, they'll get chopped off. <laughs> I don't think there was ever any um, instances where the ceiling or the rails were so tight that you couldn't raise your hands. Girl, I don't trust it, especially in the dark. It was it was an interesting experience because you can it, it's a lot s- tighter, I guess I should say, than you would think it is, um, because it seems like it's like really, really big when you get in there. But yeah. it's just kind of like a it's really tightly packed together. It's like a wild mouse coaster. Right. Because, I mean, it's top speed. I think it's 28 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. Like it don't go fast, but because you're in the dark, it's like it seems oh like God, yeah, it I'm seems like you're going like space. sixty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember one other ride I got. Um, I I guess evac off of. I don't know if you can call it evac. Um, what is the go kart ride? I can't remember what it is. It's in Tomorrowland. Autopia. Maybe. Where you was, drive the car? Yes. Autopia. Yes. Um, I that ride. When I was God, I want to say 10. Um, I was driving a car by myself and those cars don't like go very fast, but you can like bump people pretty aggressively, or at least you could um, if you like, <laughs> came, came up on somebody and they have like those. I don't know if they had like a connecting rail in the middle or not, but 
um, it has like that weird like rail system where it's, it's basically like on rails, right? Right. Um, and I was coming up on a turn and I, I was going pretty slow because I'm 10 years old and I don't know what the heck I'm doing. And right. this like teenager comes like flooring behind me like full speed and he hits me like right on the turn and it's hard enough to where like the <laughs> wheel like bounces up and it goes over the rail. So like my car like completely like broke and like went off the rail. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like oh my god so like one of the cast members like it comes like running over because they like see it happening and they're like yeah you're gonna have to get off that ride like you're gonna have to like come come with me <laughs> and he did he, did, he like walked me to the exit it was like oh thanks for coming <laughs> i was just like what that what? is so funny <laughs> And then, like, we walked away, and, like, it was at a point to where... Because you can, like, see it, like, when you're standing outside of the ride. Like, you can see pretty much the whole ride. I can see, like, three or four people, like, lifting the car and, like, struggling to, like, put it back on the, the track. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, that was, that was a weird experience. That was, like, one of the only times I was ever, like, told to get off of a ride. Because I've definitely been on rides before where it's, like, stuck. Yeah, it, like, breaks down, but then it starts again. Yeah. Oh, my God. I got stuck on the freaking Tower of Terror one time. That might be why I'm scared of it at, at some uh, <laughs> mental level. Is because I got... Tell me, girl. God, it was, like, one of the first... You know what happened is when I was a small child, I think this... I might be unlocking a core memory right now. Um, oh, no. <laughs> it was... I've definitely been on rides before and my parents, I know my parents lied to me about what the ride was to get me to go on those rides. <laughs> like, do you remember in us? Uh, you, you've been to silver dollar city before, right? Yeah. Uh, of course you have. You've worked up there. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when they used to have the log plume ride that like turned into a roller coaster? That's where powder keg was powder. Uh, yes. Correct. I forgot it, what it was called. It was like bus off balls. Or bus like off all, Yep. It was literally like it starts out as like a water ride and then it like turns into a roller coaster. It's actually kind of a cool concept. Yes. Um, and this was like one of the first times that me and my family. I love how I'm going to a different theme park now. Um, this is like That's one of the, the, <laughs> this is like one of the first times uh, me and my parents like rode that ride and I could see the intense roller coaster in the background. And I like looked down at the, uh, the car and I was like, that's the exact same car that's on that intense <laughs> roller coaster. And I told my mom, I'm like seven, I'm like six or seven years old. And I told my mom's like, mom, this turns into that roller coaster in the background. And she's like, no, it doesn't. No, no, that's a different ride. No, that's not this one. And, <laughs> I kid you not, as soon as it starts, it like it's like two or three little like fun water slides. And then it like goes on rails into this extreme roller coaster. And I am bawling my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom, we get off the ride. My mom's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I was like, I can't believe you made me do this. <laughs> Your poor mother, though. <laughs> I can only imagine how bad she, she felt like at the end of that ride. Like I am like traumatized at that point. At least you can ride roller coasters though. Like it didn't ruin everything. No. For you. Oh, I mean, I never rode that roller coaster again and then it got shut down and I'm never going to ride it again. So there's that. Yeah. It, I forgot why it shut down. It was due to safety reason, but then they removed yeah, cause it was some fucking of the track. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> They removed some of the track and put in powder keg because powder keg, I think the last half of the roller coaster is bus off falls. Oh, uh, that would make sense because powder keg's yeah, they pretty basically nice just too. reused it. That that like I'm t I like powder keg though. Powder keg is fun. Um, bus off falls like is like it just it was just deceptive. It was like it took it just. <laughs> like you like trusted the first half of it to be a water ride and then it just wasn't and then you just 
It that ruined, is so funny. It just ruined my trust in rides for a hot minute. It ruined everything. Yeah. <laughs> but this thing with the uh, Tower of Terror that I was remembering was I got stuck right before you start going up. So it's like when the ghosts are like waving at you. And there's like all the, like the flashing yes. lights and like the lightning and like the spooky sounds. Like before you drop. Right. So you're like you're seeing all the ghosts and the lightning and the, the sounds and the screams. So we were sitting there for like, <laughs> no joke, like 30 minutes. And it's just constant like screaming and like the ghost waving at you and <laughs> like the lightning. And like I, I was maybe seven or eight. This is the Oh, second time I wrote it, I, I wrote it once and I was like, oh, that was fine. I might do it again. And then after that, I was like, no, no, we're not doing that again. <laughs> okay. So they were like screaming and stuff like that. You got stuck in that area. Yeah. It was like 30 minutes. So of just, what happened. Well, eventually like, cause they like something went wrong and they came on the intercom. Like we've experienced technical difficulties. Please stay seated. We will continue this ride blah blah like you know whatever the standard thing is they say yeah and then like you know 20 minutes go by and then finally after like i'm traumatized and crying at this point um they are finally like we're about to resume the rise please you know if, you know brace for whatever and like get ready for the ride to continue or whatever and then like as soon as like they got done saying that we dropped oh my god girl <laughs> the horror <laughs> okay so i will say we didn't get stuck on tower of terror um it was just they were loading on a different elevator or something like that so we were stuck we we did all the drops and you know we went down and blah blah, blah. but we were paused like where the elevator shaft is but at the bottom and my fear always is, because it's happened to me a couple of times, I'm like, what if that elevator literally drops on top of ours? We'll die. We'll get crushed. <laughs> like, literally, it's a free fall ride. We will die. So that's always my fear with Tower of Terror is I'm going to get crushed. I thought there was two Like, eventually, or... Aren't the elevators on two different tracks? Like, they're, like, two separate sides? So there's two elevator shafts, but there's four trains going each time oh so as the two are falling the other two are in the middle of show gotcha so i guess what had happened was why we got stuck was they were loading on another train to make like six instead of four. Oh my god and because it's in the middle of, you know the busy season we were just stuck at the bottom and i heard people flipping out on top i was like oh my god like we're gonna get crushed <laughs> This is actually it. You would you would be the ghost at the <laughs> at the top. I would be haunting people left and right. Girl, like I would like bite their nose you, or something like that in the you, middle of the picture. I was gonna say you would actually make that ride terrifying. Like the ghost would be like waving at the top, and then you you'd like be like running full sprint, like middle finger, like screaming. <laughs> yes, you'd have like this long flowing like mane of hair, like all raggedy. <laughs> I would literally ruin everyone's day. <laughs> He'd be like, man, that new and ghost that is, is really why. scary. I was like, yeah. Did you hear that guy, Chris, died? And then he's his sole purpose now is to ruin the ride for everyone that goes on it. <laughs> Eventually, no one rides anymore. Like, I've gotten everyone who <laughs> goes can, to Disney World. You can finally ascend. <laughs> I, I can go to hell now. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, I could finally rest. Oh, my God. Just so funny. Oh my god. Well, we've been going for quite a while. We've covered quite a lot of bases. Is there anything else like in just general Disney yeah, that girl, you want to cover? This is gonna be the season finale. Yeah. <laughs> the end of season one. Was there anything else you want to cover for Disney before we end off? No, I think I got everything out. I got all my anger out. I got all the fun out. Like I did everything I needed to. Yeah. <laughs> You're finally ready to go back inside. <laughs> Like, I think I'm okay. I think I can go in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, uh, thanks for coming and watching uh, the Sister Girl Gossip podcast over Disney. Uh, next time, we'll be doing something else. Uh, so stay tuned yeah. for that. Uh, yeah, girl. Uh, and go to Disney and see Chris. And if 
don't yell at him though or ask him about the sky dome yeah come see me i might say hi <laughs> and if Sorry, i might just ignore you yeah i was gonna say if you uh if you meet chris and he uh, he tells you to talk to his manager you know you messed up yeah like if i send you to the manager i will not be giving you the time of day it's yeah. over it will be over <laughs> and it will be on you you will have to reflect at night and realize whatever you said was wrong literally and we will never be friends ever again yeah. like you're done <laughs> yeah and if we see you on the channel or discord you will be shunned shunned forever oh my god well girl thanks for joining me and we will see you guys on the next sister girl gossip yes honey yeah